Design me a shoe for a track runner living in New York City and competing in a marathon. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how I connected Claude Sonnet to Blender to create an AI creative agent and the three specific ways this is already solving major headaches in my 3D workflow. This is made possible using Model Context Protocol, which is essentially a bridge between an LLM like Claude and a creative software. For this video, I'm using Siddharth Ahuja's Blender MCP GitHub project. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show a full installation guide for setting this up yourself. But first, I'm going to show you some demos and talk about how this tech can help you. Now, very important, if there's anything you take away from this video, I hope it is what I'm about to say now. I'm not going to focus on using this tool to generate models, to generate textures. Every time I see AI 3D videos, it feels like that is the main focus. I want to cover new use cases that I have not seen before. So I'm going to show you three different things. First, using this tool to create a procedural generation system. In my example, I made a system where I can speak into a microphone and say, design me a shoe that looks like this. And the AI agent will look at my pre-existing shoe models, look at my pre-made textures and assets, and assemble it all together like a puzzle. Second, I'm going to talk about production logistic benefits. I truly believe this is the most practical use for professionals right now. The third is new ways to optimize the production pipeline. So I'm going to show you some examples of how you can instantly generate a plugin to solve minor headaches that we have in our workflows. So let's hop in and get started. First, I'm going to show you a demo of the procedural creative agent, and then I'll walk you through how to make one yourself. I go to Slippery Rock University and I have a track meet next week. Help me design a shoe that represents my competitive spirit so I'm confident in my track meet. All right, so we're going to let this run. This is a very kind of abstract prompt. We're going to see what it does and I'll fast forward. All right, so this is finishing up. As you can see, it's printing out the final breakdown right here. And it's pretty cool. You can design with these abstract prompts. And again, at the beginning, I talked about, oh, it's not about just using the AI to apply materials or generate so on and so forth. So let me kind of break down everything. The coolest thing about this is you can see exactly what it does and why. Uh, if you want, you can also select the shoe model and we can do like a 360 rotation here. This isn't even the uh, rendered preview view. So we'll go to that and you can see all of that nice detail if we zoom all the way in because we're using those pre-made materials that I already set up. So if I click on a material and we look, you see we have the noise texture connected to a bump just to get those little bit of details. And all it's really doing is changing the colors in the color ramp here to match our prompt. So let's break that down. I said I go to Slippery Rock University, so it's using those colors. I'm saying I want a shoe that represents my competitive spirit. So it selected the trainer collection because it's built for track performance and competitive athletics. It ran some code here. And this is essentially just selecting the shoe collection. So you see we have all of our different base models. If I just toggle them on and off, this is the trainer base model. It toggled that one on to make it visible. It switched to material preview and then it went in and set up the colors to match Slippery Rock University. As you can see, it's taking all of the green, white. It's thinking about what objects, what objects it's going to apply those materials to. Next, it's selecting those pre-made materials. As you can see, I have fly knit, carbon, textile, the ones with the noise already set up. So let's just go a little bit more in depth with this and really talk about what it's doing and the advantages of this from a logistical point of view. So let's say I select a part, I'm gonna select this right here and I'm gonna say, change the part I have selected to a metallic gold color. So we'll let that run and you can see how easy it is just to make simple little iterations just by selecting or by having metadata connected to different parts. The reason it has such an understanding of this is I've created metadata for those objects. And once I show you the step-by-step -step tutorial after this of how I set this up, I'll talk about that more. Once you have that metadata, you can just say, change the laces to gold. It's gonna understand what the laces are and it's going to make that change easily. But you can also do it with a simple selection by clicking. So there you go. So there is our metallic gold. You can see how easy it is to make those changes so I hope that gives you a good idea of how this could be a design assistant and how you can use a tool like this to work with these procedural 3D systems to make things that go beyond just generating something from scratch, generating material. Again, you're using your existing 3D knowledge to make something even bigger by using AI. That's the entire goal here.
there is our tech demo breakdown of the MCP. Let me just start from scratch here. I'm going to show you how you can actually make something like this, uh, a procedural AI generation system training the creative agent. And I'm going to give you just a quick case study of some of the overall production benefits of a creative agent like this. Let's create a new general here. All right, some behind the scenes on how you can create these pre-trained creative agents using MCP. So again, I mentioned before I'm using pre-modeled shoe assets. So I loaded one up here and I specifically chose this one because as you can see on the right, everything is in Chinese. So we have the MCP server connected. I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to Windows H. Translate all of the object names in my Blender scene to English. All right, so we'll let this run. This is just a simple showcase of the advantage of an MCP creative agent connected with our software. It's able to communicate, and as you can see, everything just switched to English. It's able to communicate with Blender in Python, whereas we, as human beings, if we wanna do something, we're clicking buttons and running operators to achieve what we want. It's able to have that deeper understanding of your scene. If we look at the execute code, it's looking at all of the names, creating dictionary mapping, current object names, light, mesh, and then it's going in and completely changing it for you. That didn't really solve much because just like in English where everyone is creating cube and then modifier and not really going deep into it, same in Chinese, I translated it. All I have, the only information I was given is, yes, these are a bunch of cubes. So let's take this further. I want you to rename these objects so that they represent the corresponding parts of my shoe model. For example, instead of cube.007, if it's assigned to the laces, it'll be called laces. It's analyzing the shoe structure and it's proposing names based on typical shoe anatomy. It's doing this based on the positions and the dimensions, so it's able to look at the objects in your scene and help solve problems. It found cube one, upper side, tongue, collar foam. So just in a second, you're going to see just like that, it's going to apply. And as you can see, there you go. So again, just an amazing way to solve these logistic issues. This is something that could take hours. And the more you scale up in these production houses, the more hours, time, resources it's going to take to do these mundane tasks like this. I was able to do this instantaneously with a creative agent. This is something that can reduce production and iteration time. This could be technology that saves millions of dollars in the VFX industry. And you can continue to go further with this. It depends on what your desired outcome is. So now that you have the understanding just based off what we see, just the object name, the next thing you would want to do is create understanding for the agent in the form of metadata. And this is a lot more simple than it sounds. You can essentially just say, create a JSON file for each of these parts and then connect it into the object data properties for each of those models. That way you have an understanding based off these different names that you have here. And the MCP agent has an understanding based off of the metadata connected to the object parts. Whenever it is piecing together that puzzle and you say, I'm running a marathon, it's gonna look at the metadata and choose the one that has the best fit for comfort, endurance, performance. If you say, I want something stylish, it's going to go for something that has those tags like urban stylish, fashion, etc. So pretty outstanding. The last little example I want to show you is just the ease of use of refining your workflow in the creative pipeline. So I showed a little snippet of it before uh, talking about light collections. I'm just going to do that one more time and talk more in depth about that because I think that this in of itself is completely mind blowing. And it's the perfect example for that AI Python to Blender relationship. I want you to take our existing lighting setup and organize it into its own collection. Once you've done that, I want you to duplicate that collection three different times. And with those duplications, I want you to create variations of this lighting setup based on different emotions or moods. So pretty long prompt, pretty uh, lengthy. Let's see what it does. Just gave you some quick iterations, organize them into collections. If I wanted to, if this was all disorganized, I could say, go ahead and organize everything, make it all nice and easy to use. What I want to do is show you one more step further. So I'm going to say, this is good, but I want to 
organize this workflow a bit better. Let's refine the lighting to also affect the HDRI. Go in and create a Python plugin panel so that I can easily switch between different HDRI lighting setups. Once you click the button to change the HDRI, it also selects the corresponding lighting collection with all the other objects. Again, kind of just rambling. Let's see what it does with this. This is what it made. It took that concept a little bit further, a full shoe lighting studio plugin. This is just showing what it can do to ease those workflows. Yes, it's possible to do this. People have been making plugins, but whenever you're in the process of relighting, you're not going to think, oh, let me just go write a plugin for this to make one little step easier. Whenever you're using an agent like this, you can do that. It's showing the HDRI. I'm able to click and you can see how that's changing just straight up in the background. For some reason, it's not actually changing the collection up here. So I'd probably have to go in and troubleshoot that a little bit. As you can see, the more in depth you go, the more you're going to have to tinker with it. And hopefully that's just a quick little look into the future of how we're going to be interacting with these creative softwares. And again, the thing I like about this is none of this would be possible if I didn't have that pre-existing knowledge of how to use Blender. If I knew nothing about HDRIs and what that can do for lighting and how I could work that into this, then it becomes completely irrelevant. That's why I wanted to make this video because like I said at the beginning, every time I see something about AI or 3D, it's look how you can use AI to now do modeling. Look how you can use AI to now do this. But no one's really taking that existing knowledge of how to use the software and thinking of different ways they can elevate that knowledge to new heights or to ease just pain points that we already have. And that's normal. This is so new that really the only people talking about MCP, the only people talking about how to use it in Blender are developers who are just kind of experimenting. So I highly recommend you guys experiment with this. I want to see what you come up with and what you can do with this. If you stumbled across this video because maybe you're an AI guy, but you're not so much a 3D guy, but you're interested and you want to learn Blender so you can have that pre-exist pre-existing knowledge. I have a course linked down below that gives you private access to a discord where if you have any questions while learning how to use things, you can ping me. We can work on it together. I'm also going to dive deeper into setting up some more procedural systems, and I'm going to put that on my Patreon. So in that, you're going to have the training for how I set up that creative agent with the procedural system. I'll show you the metadata. I'll walk a lot more in depth on the specific specifics of that if you are interested. So a quick little tutorial on how to install and set this up. So some prerequisites, you need Blender 3.0 or above, as well as Python 3.1 or above. You can go to blender.org to download that. And you can go and download Python if you do not have that included on your PC already. Next, you just need to run a quick little command script. So you can search for CMD, paste that script in there, and then click enter. If for any reason that isn't working, there's also installation instructions uh, via UV right here, where you can try a couple of these different ones. Next, you're going to need Claude Desktop. So just go to this link below to download that for Windows or Mac. Once you have Claude Desktop, you want to click in the top left, go to File and then Settings, go over to Developer Mode and then click Edit Config. You can see I have one for Blender as well as for Figma, just testing a couple of out. And from there, you just want to paste in this code to your config file and then save it. Now, the next step is to install the Blender add-on. So you want to go to this addon.py file, go ahead and download that file and then open up Blender. And we're going to go up to edit, preferences, install, navigate to wherever you save that add-on and just click it here and click install add-on. I've already done it. So once you have installed it, you can just look up MCP. Make sure this is checked on Blender MCP interface. Once that's checked on, you can click on the little panel over here and just scroll down until you find Blender MCP and you want to click to connect to the MCP server so that this is active. Once you have set up the Blender plugin as well as the Claude config, you should see this little hammer icon in Claude desktop. And for me, it's actually different before I was seeing a hammer. Now I click here and I can see it all right here. So once you're seeing the hammer or you're seeing the Blender MCP placed into there, you want to start the server. I like to create this sort of split screen view like this. So you can click connect to MCP server and you want to test just by saying, add a cabin into my Blender 3D scene. You want to prompt it to say in my Blender 3D scene. So usually it'll pop up and say allow access to build the connection first. And now this is working. 
So another thing I recommend, I'm using the, I think, basic plan for Claude Sauna just to get more processing time. Whenever you're running code, you're going to run into limitations fast. So you can do it for free, but I recommend if you're using this a lot, you pay for a higher subscription. And that's really about it. It does run into some issues if you try and tell it to model something from scratch. You know, it's going to try and build it from primitive objects and not really work. That's why I wanted to show that kind of logistical aspect. There's also issues with trying to use it for animation, use it for geometry nodes. So again, keep your expectations in check. It is a work in progress. If there are developments for what you can do with this, I'll probably make a video updating. So that's it for this video. The crazy thing about this is you can create these AI creative agents for any software, not just Blender. So in the next few videos, I'll show you Premiere, After Effects, Unreal Engine. We're going to dive into what you can do with these. And I might even go in and start hand tailoring my own based on feedback or based on specifics for what I want it to do. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.